A collection of 49 nickels and pennies is worth 85 cents. How many of the coins are nickels? All right, so that is the problem. Now, if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step on how we solve this problem. All right, so one more time, we have a collection of 49 nickels and pennies. So we have 49 total coins, and the value of all these nickels and pennies is worth 85 cents. How many of these coins are nickels? All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is the following. There are nine nickels. Okay, so if you got that right, you definitely get a happy face and A plus, congratulations. Now, how you solve this problem is entirely up to you. As long as you got the solution, that's what counts, but I'm gonna show you how algebra is awesome to solve a problem like this. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. So the first step in solving any math word problem is to read it at least three times, right? So make sure you understand the information in the problem and the actual question before you start doing anything. So here we're looking for how many coins are nickels. So this is our question, but what is the information that we have? Well, we have 49 nickels and pennies, and the total value of these nickels and pennies is 85 cents. So a good strategy to figure out any math problem is to try to kind of visualize it. So there's different ways you can do this, but I'm gonna do it this way. So we have some nickels and some pennies. Matter of fact, we have 49 total coins, right? So these are our coins down here. And the value of these coins is 85 cents. And what we're looking for is how many nickels. So how can we solve this problem? Well, a great approach is to use algebra. Now, of course, you could use kind of trial and error and mess around with the value of a nickel and a penny until you get the right answer. But I'm going to use algebra because algebra just makes our life a lot easier when we're looking to solve for an unknown value. All right, so how many coins are nickels? Let's let the variable n represent the number of nickels that we have. Now, a variable in algebra is simply a, a symbol that represents a number, right? So I'm gonna say n is gonna be our answer, right? That's gonna represent how many coins are nickels. So what we have to do here, if we have a variable, to solve for this variable, we need to build an equation. So once you have a variable assigned in algebra, you need an equation to actually solve for that variable. Now here, we do have a kind of relationship going on in the problem. So we have to be very careful when we read the words of this problem. And the word that we're interested in is right here, is, right? So anytime you see the is symbol, that is the equal sign. All right, so here we have a collection of 40, 49 nickels and pennies that is equal to 85 cents. So we need, really kind of need to think about this. So if n is the number of nickels I have, well, how can we represent, represent the number of pennies? Now you might be saying to yourself, well, can we use another variable like p to represent the number of pennies? Well, when you have two variables in uh, an algebraic equation, you actually need two equations to solve a two variable situation, right? So if I have n and p, and I'm trying to solve for n and p, I have two variables here. So I'm going to need to build two equations. So this is what we don't want to do, right? So you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm a little bit confused. Well, let's think about a way that we can express pennies in terms of nickels. All right, so we know that we have 49 nickels and pennies, and the total value is 85 cents. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so again, we're talking about algebra, and if you never solved an algebra word problem, you know, it does take practice, but you're gonna see here how nice this setup is going to be to solve this problem. All right, so if we let n equal the number of nickels, and we have 49 total coins. So let's suppose here, here's all my coins, and let's say we have 10 nickels. Well, if we have 10 nickels, how many pennies uh, must there be in all of our coins, right? Well, it's gonna be 49 minus 10 because we have 49 total coins. So if I have N nickels and I wanna know how many pennies I have, well, the number of pennies I have is gonna be 49, the total number of coins minus the nickels. All right, so we can represent 
the number of pennies we have this way. We don't need another variable. All right, so here, this is fantastic because this expression, 49 minus n, and n, okay, n represents the number of nickels, and 49 minus n represents the number of pennies, both have the same variable n, and this is gonna make our life really easy to solve this problem. Okay, so once we have two expressions here, that represent the number of nickels and pennies, the next thing that we need to do is build an equation so we can solve for this variable. So now that we have two algebraic expressions that represents the number of nickels and pennies that we have, we need to tie in the 85 cents, right? So the number of nickels and pennies, the t a combined total, of course, is 49 coins, but the value of these coins is 85 cents. So if I have, let's say, two nickels, what's the value of those nickels? Well, it would be two times five cents. So we need to understand something about nickels. Matter of fact, uh, let me kind of go back up here for those of you that are not familiar with uh, US currency. So when we have coins, right, we have coins and uh, dollar bills, right? So fiat money, here's like a $1 bill. This is uh, worth 100 cents, right, or 100 pennies. But in terms of change in coins, we have, uh, let me go ahead and just quickly run through this. We have a penny, we have a nickel, we have a dime, and then we have a quarter. So a penny is worth one cent, uh, a nickel is worth five cents, a dime is worth 10 cents, and a quarter is worth 25 cents. And this is the symbol right there for cents and 100 cents gives us one dollar bill. Okay, so you need to understand the value of a nickel and uh, a penny, all right? So if you weren't familiar with the US currency, this is basically it. All right, so the total uh, value of these 49 coins is 85 cents, but the value of a nickel is what? Well, it's five cents. So if I have two nickels, for example, the total value of those nickels is gonna be two times five cents or 10 cents, right? So this is what we need to kind of be thinking about. We're thinking about the value now of all these coins. All right, so our nickels times five cents, that's gonna give us the value of all the nickels plus the number of pennies that we have plus our times one cents will give us the value of all these pennies. So how can we represent this algebraically? Well, how many nickels do we have? Well, we have N nickels, right? Remember we let n represent the number of nickels. So the value here of how many nickels we have, we don't know, but the value is gonna be n times five, right? Because we are talking about cents. So 85 cents, five would be five cents. Now we're gonna add the value of pennies. Now, how many pennies do we have? We have 49 minus n pennies, but all these pennies are worth one cent. So the total value of our nickels and our pennies is gonna be N times five plus 49 minus N times one. This is gonna be equal to 85 cents. Remember, all the units right here are in cents. So we're talking about cents uh, right here, cents and cents. Okay, so we don't have to do any converting, but what we have to do now is solve this simple algebraic equation for N and we'll have our answer. Are you struggling in math because of confusing lessons? Maybe the teacher's not showing you all the steps you need or things are happening too fast. Well, there is a better way. So come on over to my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. There you'll find clear step-by-step -step instruction by me that will definitely make a huge difference in your math success. So make sure to check out all my courses by following the links in the description. All right, so now that we understand how we got our equation, what we need to do is know how to solve it. So here is our equation. So let's go ahead and go through this step by step. So n times five is the same thing as five n. So we'll write that right there, plus 49 minus n times one. So that's simply gonna be 49 minus n, and this is gonna be equal to 85. So in algebra, when you're solving equations, all you wanna do is just take one, no more than two steps, and write that as a line, and then continue forward. All right, so here we have 5n plus 49 minus n is equal to 85. Now there's nothing uh, to do inside of uh, these parentheses, so we kind of drop, we can kind of drop them. And if you notice here, I have this n, but really this is one n. 
So our equation at this point is 5n plus 49 minus 1n is equal to 85. Now I bring this up because I want you to understand that these two are what we call like terms. We have an n here and an n here, right? But specifically we have 5n and this is a negative 1n. So what we can do is combine these like terms. So 5n minus 1n is 4n. So now we have 4n plus 49 is equal to 85. Okay, now what we're trying to do is get n on one side of the equation, the left-hand side, and, the, and one number on the right-hand side. When we get to this point, we have the solution. So we're down to 4n plus 49 is equal to 85. So what we need to do now is move this 49 to the other side of the equation. And the way we can do that is simply subtract 49 from both sides of the equation. So in algebra, you could do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it to both sides equally. All right, so now that we're gonna subtract 49 from both sides of the equation, we're gonna add down in a column manner. So 4n plus nothing is 4n. 49 minus 49 is zero. That goes away and we don't need to write a zero. And 85 minus 49 is 36. Okay, so we're almost there. Again, we're trying to get n equals some number, but now we're down to 4n is equal to 36. So how can we get n all by itself? Easy. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1. So here we have 1n or n. And here we have 36 divided by 4, which is 9. So n is equal to 9. Okay, so that is the solution to this problem. Now, if you used a different approach, that's perfectly fine, as long as you understand uh, what you did. And you could prove it, let's say, to a teacher, right? So when you're doing math, you always want to think about how can you justify your results, right? So if you say, hey, I knew the answer was n was equal to 9, and I said, oh, how did you do that? How did you get to your conclusion? And if you're like, well, I don't really know, I just know that's the answer. Well, you want to think about your steps and your logic. Okay, now if you need additional help in math or algebra, a couple quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. But if you really want to learn from me, you got to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And the kind of level of math that we're doing here is like Algebra 1. So if you're an Algebra student, I have Pre-Algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, etc. Now, if you just want to kind of learn math or relearn math just as a hobby, then check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You'll find links to all this in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.